Twenty-five years is not long, it's not short, but for a university, it is rather short. But within such a short time, this university grow, become one of the top university in the world, highly regarded in the academic community in many areas. Congratulations and a happy birthday. <laughs> so now I come to the main talk of my research. I hope to bring something uh, to our students for inspiration, for the spirit of this university have given to you so you can explore something we probably never do before. I've become to know about energy about 10 years ago. The purpose of I do energy is about a smaller scale energy, energy needed for small electronics, something tiny. And from those tiny devices, there's a lot of potential applications, particularly related to small things, related to Internet of Things, sensor network. So let me start with this little story, then I'll go over to here. Okay. Ten years ago, I was working on nanomaterials. And one of the things we was talking about that, besides we fabricate a lot of devices, how are we going to power these devices? So I was looking at a, a human. A human has a lot of energy. Any activity has some kinetic energy, mechanical energy. How can we convert this energy into electricity to power devices? And particularly a human is a local grid, a micro or nano grid. A lot of things social with us has to be communicated with the outside world. That's the grid means. But to provide power, such as tiny little thing like this, how do we do that? That was the motivation 10 years ago when I started to do this. Human has a lot of activity. So I started thinking, can we use any motion we have to, to drive this? Well, if you do energy conversion using mechanical, there's a lot of effects. Electromagnetic effect, electrostatic, piezoelectric, and recently troboelectric. I mostly focus on these last two effects, and the other two effects is well established, and see what we can do use nanomaterials for human body motion energy conversion. Okay. So we start this work back to then, use grow nanowire materials, use atomic force microscopy to trigger the nanowires, we receive about 5 millivolts output. But this paper report an idea of so-called nanogenerate. Many people read this now. And then proposed the idea of soft power nanosystem. And lastly, proposed the idea for piezoelectronics, as the present say that many people know about piezoelectricity. What is this about? So this is the beginning. And at the beginning of that paper, I wrote soft power system. And this has become popular today. Use human body motions, blood vessel, vibration, any kind of body fluid. Can we change electricity for that? The reason, I think one thing is true. Anything made by human has to be tried by electricity. Anything made by God driven by, by chemical or chemical energy. Like us, we eat, we can walk, we do whatever. But if a machine, if you feed the food, there's nothing move. That's the difference. So we need, have, we need the power, we need the, the things to do that. So we grow these materials, zinc oxide, and many faculty in, uh, in this university grow this material as well. This is a material's lack of central symmetry. Cations and anise centers usually overlap, but one on the mechanical force uh, polarizes, and then the polarization gives you a dipole moment. So along this body, have a potential, they call piezoelectric potential. How does general electricity, if apply mechanical strain, polar charge create an interface? Then the polar charge drives the electron to flow through external load to screening the uh, polar charge. Release the strain, electron flows back. So this is cycled motion back and forth, drive electron back and forth is the fundamental mechanism of piezoelectric nanogenerate. Okay. So a few years ago, we use a single nanowire put on a finger edge, we'll be able to generate a few volts. Uh, or we also present, use the heartbeat of, let me, heartbeat of this little animal 
to general electricity. It even was small, but it was for the first time. This was a piezoelectric effect. Later on, we continue to develop. We use the, use the substrate, we grow nanomaterials, we fabricate the devices, put the electrode, package it together, and these things can give about 100 microampere current, 50 volts, much higher than we first observed at the very beginning. And utilize this, you'll be able to stimulate biological species like that. This is a, a leg of a frog. It's still alive, the nerve is still alive. When the electricity the signals trigger this one, this thing jumps back and forth, just for interesting demonstration. So this was the beginning of our research on nano energy. Over the few years, start from very small, we went through and continued to strive to improve the performance. We have tried this through these ways for that. And today, I'm not planning to give you an overview of how do we get here, just give you a summary of what we could do by the year 2011. Over the years, based on this idea, piezoelectricity and triboelectricity, we have grown a number of things. Triboelectricity, piezoelectricity based in nano generator. We also grow this field called piezotronics. This is more science related, and this is more engineering application oriented. So let me start with the science first, then we go through the engineering application. And all these phrases are the ones we be able to coin during the course, 10 year course of study, nano generators and the piezotronics. Okay. Piezotronics, what is it about? Some of people may never heard about this. Let me introduce the idea here. The motivation to introduce the idea is for the future of functional devices. The development world is driven by miniaturization, portable or wireless. Now it's functionality. We make the device smaller and smaller, but the number increases, okay? And in the near future, a lot of folks on a human, particularly like, uh, use brain-based calculations. Bank in a, uh, in, in, a, in, in a palm, all these kind of ideas. It's all social to human. So there's a lot of uh, interaction between human and the machine. A human is a very unique entity. It communicates with different ways. Electronics is another entity communicating with itself. Both operate a complete different mechanism. How do we across the interface? How do we interface here? So we want to introduce a way. Can we use the mechanical sensation of human motion to control electronics? Is this possible? Is this something a dream? We borrow the idea of nano generator. And then that general, general idea is use the piezoelectric potential generated as a driving force to drive electron flow in external load. This is the nano generator. Let's do a different. Let's look at this one. Instead of apply a load, we apply a voltage here. So if there's carriers here, the carrier will transport across the interface. The material we use is zinc oxide or gallium nitride. This is a semiconductor piezoelectric material, dual property. So under the driving force of the voltage, all these carriers have to flow through this system. At the interface, we have polar charge on the mechanical strain. The presence of the polar charge here can dramatically tune the transport of these carriers. In other words, we use a strain to control the transport of carriers Device based on this is called piezotronic devices. At the very beginning, it was 2006, we phrased the word called piezotronics. And we, today, we can develop this furthermore based on our original idea. Okay. What's the difference? The difference is that silicon CMOS based devices have a source, have a drain, they have a gate voltage. This gate voltage controls the channel width for the current flow through. So it's a control signal here. It's a control signal here. Now, instead of channel width control, can we use the interface control? Because any carrier, they have to go through the interface. If we have the polar charge at the interface here or here, we can build a new transistor, which used a, not a voltage control, but strain generated internal voltage control. We can change the sign of the strain from tensile to compressive so we can control the left-hand side 
or right hand side device. Is this possible? Is this something uh, going to be feasible in reality? So we try to do experiment. The first case is metal semiconductor case. Let's make a metal semiconductor interface. Normally, this have an ohmic contact, or it can have a shorted contact. This is a shorted contact here. If you introduce a compressor strain, negative I raise the shock barrier height. If you change to tensile strain, it's positive I lower the barrier height. This is raised or lower barrier height can control the transport of electron through the interface. So therefore, apply mechanical strain, we can generate this local charge which can turn on and off the transport of the carrier for the interface. This is the idea as a switch. Okay. So let's do experiment. This is a single nanowire-based device, two contacts. Both ends have a shorted contact. Now, if you apply a bias through these two ends here, the Fermi level are being shifted a little bit because the bias voltage applied. Now, in addition to the bias voltage you applied, which drive the carrier to flow, now we apply an external mechanical strain. Because this nanowire is piezoelectric and a semiconductor, we have polar charge created at the interface here. If this is a positive polar charge, it lowers the barrier height. You see, original barrier height is higher here. Now it's lowered a little bit. So when the electron flow from this side to this side, the lower the barrier, electron go through. So on the tensile strain, this device is on. Okay. Now from the tensile strain, you switch to compressive strain. Is negative ions here? Negative ion raise the barrier. The electron flow here. It cuts off because the barrier height is high. So on the compressive strain. It is off. This strain control on and off is a typical characteristic of a transistor. It's a switch. This is the basic idea of piezotronics. Now we can do this vertical nanowires. By applying mechanical strain through an EFM, we can generate polar charge at the interface. With the increase of the force, the strain increases and also the polar charge increases. So the turn-on voltage for this device shifts with the increase of forces. We experimentally measure that. It can shift from 0.6 volts to about 1.5 volts when you apply the, volt, uh, the force increase from 420 nanonewton to 700 nanonewton. This shifts in turn-on voltage is because of the presence of this charge here. Now, if you fix at 1 volt here, if you fix at 1 volt here, this is off and this is on. So you can see, in such a case, you'll be able to control the device on or off by the strain. So this is called strain-gated transistor. We did not stop at one device. We go parallel device, array of device. If we can get rid of gay voltage here, we save the space. We have two terminal devices here, and instead of external voltage control become internal potential control. You'll be able to design this crossbar structure. Each is a piezotronic transistor. And this whole thing, we fabricate a chip, 31 steps. Inside this chip is this structure. We have the electrode, we have nanowire growth, we have the filling materials, we have the packaging materials, and a top electrode as well. One centimeter square surface area, we have 9,000 9, such piezotron transistor. So this is an array of devices. Then we measured it on the area of one centimeter square. 92 transistors this way, 92 transistors this way. By very the local strain we applied, we can sense to detect the map through this piezotronic transistor arrays. This elaborate a new principle, a new effect, and also possibly new application is a way to convert strain produced by human motions or human, human fingerprints into electronic signals through this means. Okay. So what's the difference? Many of us are very familiar with the piezo resistant effect. We are not familiar with the piezotronic effect. What's the difference? This is normally a linear curve. This is non-linear curve. This is called symmetric effect because the resistance change is disregard the bias of voltage applied. It's just like a resistor. 
But this is depends which way you apply the voltage. At one end, the shorting barrier is raised. The other end is lowered. They call, we call a symmetric tuning, it means this. So this has a strong polarity. This has no polarity. This is an interface effect. This is rather than like a volume effect. So this can be a switch. This cannot be a switch. So there's different effects involved here. So what I just present is some physical argument. If you have a layer of polar charge at the interface here or here, it can serve as a, 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 a tuning to transport behavior. We, through first principle calculation, consider the polarity of the zinc oxide. We can predict the polar charge distribution at the two and interface. Through those ones, we derive the change in the short grip barrier height. At one end, it drops with increase of strain from compressor strain to tensile strain. The other end, short grip barrier increases. This opposite change of strain is exactly what we expect from the physical picture argument. This opposite change is the way we anticipate, and this the calculation, it does prove that. Then say, so what's the difference here with the silicon symbols? Can we do complementary operations? The answer is yes. How do we do that? The reason, this is the external voltage control. This become a inner crystal potential control. This is strain, uh, this is voltage control, this is strain control. This is three terminal, and this is two terminal. Use different materials, silicon based, Uzzard based. This can be very fast, this can be slow. This is for logic computation, but this is for human machine interface and sensors. Operate different speed, but both can be complements and integration. And that's what we view, we can future build this one on top of that one, use this to control the electronics. What are the possibilities? We want to think, can we have an imagination-controlled electronics? Something thinking of our brain, immediately action taken. Can we build something like this in the future? Is this possible? Maybe take 10 years, maybe take longer. But through this mechanical cessation control, could we do this in the future? I think there's a possibility. So we want to explore new things, and we probably can realize in a number of years. <clears throat> That's the first example electronics. The second one, what happens with photonics? How does a piezo charge control photonic process? The first time we introduced this idea is 2010. We wrote this phrase in the conclusion part. And the second one, paper we have this one, is as a new effect. How does it come with this new effect? Let's look at some animation. We have a PN junction, a P type and an N type junction here. We have a charge depletion zone to be formed when the two become physical contact. This charge depletion zone is the, under the mechanical strain here. This has a piezoelectric effect. The polar charge presented here can raise the local profile of band structure a little bit if it's negative I. Or you change the strain from compressive to tensile strain. This, the positive I here can introduce a little dip. This depletion zone can a little bit change in the band structure, gigantically affect the transport, separation, or recombination of charge carriers. So let me give you some example for this. The first effect is that change slightly the charge channel at the interface. You can have positive I, you can have negative I, number one. Number two, the depletion zone can shift to left-hand side if this negative eye is repulsive. Or positive eye shift to right-hand side. This small shift in depletion zone to different direction can dramatically change optoelectronic processes, such as LED, solar cell. Let me give you one example. We started five different cases. Solar cell, photo detector, LED, sensors, and electrochemical process. All the detail I have described. Let me just give you one example, LED. We made an LED. Use zinc oxide and gallium nitride to make an interface, N and P. And on the current driving, the light emission. But you hold it with a static, static strain here. So you made device, you hold a static force here. You find 
the emission intensity increased by a factor of 17. The absolute efficiency is 4.25. The absolute efficiency increased 4.25. Why? The reason why, okay? The reason is because at the interface, when we have this, the presence of one layer of piezoelectric polar charge, then introduce a charge channel here, a charge channel here. This charge channel can trap the electron a little bit longer. The reason because electron have a higher mobility. So if you can keep the electron a little bit longer at the interface, increase the electron hole recombination efficiency, give more light, okay? Give more light. In other words, you measure the light intensity, you know the local strain you applied, right? You applied here. So this is the physical argument. We, do, we did the, the band strut calculation, find that it is truly the case, number one, that do have a, a channel of presence with, due to piezoelectric effect. Also, the deposition zone shift to the right-hand side or left-hand side depends on the sign of the strain as what we anticipate. This small change produces a lot of difference in the LED efficiency. Okay? We did not stop at the single nanowires. We make an array of devices, 22,000 nanowires. Each root is an LED emitter. Each root is an LED emitter. In such a case, let's say, if the emission intensity depends on the strain applied, let's make a stamp, A, B, and C, stamp on. If you apply different strain, the emission light is different. Through the emission light, we can map the strain produced by this stamp on the substrate. Is this possible? So we make this kind of device here. And then here is the, is the five letters, step on. Once you increase the strain to about 0.15%, you can see these letters appear very clearly. This is the LED emitter from each nanowires give you this strain mapping. This gives you the highest resolution of strain mapping at a resolution about one, one half to two micron, which for strain mapping is very good, it's out the, so far the best ones. One snapshot gives you this one. But more important, this proved our idea, the piezophototronic effect in opt optoelectronic devices. So this is one example. This effect is more general. It can expand to other materials, like 2D materials. A lot of faculty study 2D materials. Let me give you one example. Molybdenum disulfide is piezoelectric. But this piece of electricity depends how many atomic layers. If you have a single atomic layer, molybdenum disulfide, if you draw the unit cell, it lacks of central symmetry. So the, on the mechanical strain, the set of positive ions and negative ions shifts. This is the piece of electricity. When you become double layers, the projection has central symmetry, no piece of electricity. So if you have one atomic layer, it has a piece of electricity, theoretically. Double layer, no. Is this true? So we use experiment to measure that. So this is, we transfer this one on a substrate. We carefully make a device like this. This is the soft substrate on the mechanical strain. If there's a polar charge present in, in the device, which can drive the electron from one electrode to flow to the other one. Basically, single atomic layer based nano generator. So can we see this effect? So we try to measure this one. Let's do that. This is the effect. What do we find for one layer, three layer, five layer, molybdenum disulfide? We have the signal. For four, two, four, six, and above, no piece of electricity. This is a proof what the theoretically expected result, piece of electricity in atomic thick molybdenum disulfide. And again, this is a typical nano effect. If you don't have such a thin sample, you have no this effect. So greatly expand the physical property of this materials at atomic layer. So, okay? so this is the one. But also we show that the piezotronic effect is also present in single layers. If you look at the blue curve, it's zero strain, zero percent strain. But if you increase to 0.71 percent strain on a positive bias, the, vote, the current increases. On the negative bias, the current drops. This increases the current and drop the current on, a, on two different bias. Is it because 
different sign of polar charge at interface. One lower the barrier height, one raise the barrier height, give you this, this kind of signal here. But when you change to double layers, you see on the positive bias, increase the strain, increase the current here, this also increase the current here. This piezotronic effect disappears here. So therefore, proof the piezotronic effects is also more general for 2D materials. Okay, so this gives you an example for that. Over the 10 years, we study a number of effects. The question is that why people have previously have not thought about this one? I suggest one reason is probably due to the material system they used. For optoelectronics, you have three, five compound semiconductor, two, six compound semiconductor. You have those outstanding materials, you have this field. Piezoelectricity most, mostly use PZT. You choose the best material for your purposes. But now, if you use one material, such as zinc oxide or gallium nitride, you bring them together, you have new overlap. Coupling between semiconductor piezoelectricity is piezotronics. Coupling between three-way coupling is the piezophototronics, what we present right here. This two-way coupling, also piezoelectricity can give photon emission. Is this possible? So I want to present next that to you. So this study proposed a few interesting properties. First one, piezotronic effect. Polar charge, two in the charge transport at the interface junction is referred to this effect. Use the polar charge tuned charge carrier separation or recombination in optoelectronic process referred to, to piezophototronic effect. Lastly, can a piezoelectricity produce photons? And I want to show you that. And uh, <clears throat> this is an experiment. We have a zinc sulfide particles, nanoparticles, doped magnesium embedded in polymer matrix. No current applied, no voltage applied. On the mechanical strain, it gives light emission. And the light emission increases the intensity about orange color, increase with the increase the force. We can make this film here and use the pencil to write on that. You can get emission light here. So this is a strain produced photon emission. Why is so? We want to suggest a possible explanation for that. So this is the structure like that. A student write on that. You can see the, 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 the display here, OK? Display, display here. Why is so? We suggest one possibility for this kind of structure here. You can see that. Okay, zinc sulfide has a band gap of 3.7 electron volts. Magnet doping have the impurity states. If this particle has piezoelectricity on the mechanical strain, its band structure can be tilted because of the polar charge here. Tilted band can detrap the electrons originally trapped by the impurity states. Detrapped electrons can fall into the whole state, give additional energy. But this energy may not be radiative energy. It can directly transfer to the impurity states, for example, magnesium, excite from A state to T state, then jump back, give you orange color emission for that. So this is a suggestion that under the strain produced piezoelectricity, you can have this light emission. This is a very basic research. This is a very basic research but have some potential applications here. Electronic signature. If you sign a character like this, people can easily copy the graphics you have. But in each pixel, when you write, you use different force, different people differently. The emission light can record the force or pressure you applied in writing this character here. That's a 3D intelligent signature. We can record the way you write. Recall your personality in this one. Nobody can copy. Immediately have potential. I think the Bank of China talked with us. Can we develop this one for the possible application for your future electronic exchange of information? Okay. When do we figure this out? I wrote a review article in 2008. I say towards self-powered nanosystem. That time we have not reached that. It's towards. We're still toward it. Okay. But now we have a lot of things to illustrate today. In the, one of the texts I wrote. The trapped charge can drop from the valence or surface state back to the valence band, possibly resulting in a photon emission. So this was the original. Our thought should have photon emission, otherwise my circle is not complete. So I'll try to make the circle more complete. 
Now, experimentally observe that. This is done in the Beijing Institute. Experiment proved that. Also, the uh, uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic uh, uh, Hao Jianhua did experiment as well, also proved those uh, present again. So only a few papers prove that this is possible. But I think in the future, we can divide this into a robust, uh, intelligent signature system. Okay. Over the 10 years, we made a lot of things. We focused on those fundamentals. We made this all made in our lab. And today, due to time limitation, I only give you a couple examples to show what is piezoelectronics. What is about? The major idea is piezoelectricity to control all these optoelectronic processes in the devices. And that can be potentially useful for something we care about in the near future. So this first part, I mainly focus on fundamental science. Fundamental science from very basic concept. Of may, at the very beginning, it's just speculation to experimental design, to verification, and also potential application for commercial things, OK? Now let me talk about energy. Energy is a big thing. And we work on a small energy, so we call nano generator for nano energy. Everything's nano, right? Small things. Energy is a social, it's everything we care about, from society, climate change, environment, national security, to quality of life. Everything's energy is the core of our life. So we also start to do energy, but our study mainly focuses on small devices. Let me start with the small. If you make a small device for medical purposes, if you put this inside the body, the battery runs out, out very quickly. So how can you get a battery charged? So 2007, I wrote this article called Self-Powered Nanotech. We want to make this device not only just detect biological signals, but also can have some mechanical energy or fluid energy from the environment to power this and send the signal out. So at that time, this was a dream. It was a dream, was not a reality, but today it can become reality. So this was solar power nanotech. Okay. Let me show you a a discovery we found in, in 2011. That time, we have two pieces of polymers, one stacked on top of the other one. And on a finger age, we suddenly drive three to five volts, three to five volts output. And we were surprised by that time, but we did not stop. We spent six months to figure out this related to trouble electricity. Okay, trouble electricity. Trouble electricity was new here, okay? Trouble electricity, everybody knows that. Everybody know that. And uh, the first class we have in the physics middle school is trouble electric discharge. OK, we knew that. Everybody know that. Now we have two materials, two insulated materials become physical contact charge transferred. The charge will not go back. If you open a gap, there's an open circuit voltage. We drive the electron to flow from one electrode to the other one. When you close the gap, this potential disappears, the electron flows back. So this is cycled motion back and forth, drive electron to flow in the external load. This depends on two effects. Trouble electricity as the driving force. Electrostatic induction as the current gener generation process, coupling here. As you can see, we can make a fingernail size here, pressing this one, give you about 80 volts output. We'd be able to make complete transparent generators. Okay? Trouble electricity we know. Normally we know is a trouble electric discharge. But this is trouble electric power generator. There's a difference. Power generator, you have to drive electron to flow. That's the power generator. So this is the first mode. It's basically the physical contact separation mode. Okay? The second mode is sliding. Two materials sliding one against the other one give you trouble electricity. And then when you separate, we have electrical polarization. The electron have to flow from one electrode to the other one to screen in the field. Not complicated, very easy to understand. Now, you'll be able to use it like this principle. You can generate power. You can see this in a hand, and it's sliding back and forth like that. You can see like that. Right? Pretty bright. This is many LED light here. Each needed two volts to drive, all in the serial. This is the two modes. We totally have four modes. 
I'll just introduce two basic modes because due to time limitation. Okay. So let's show you the possibility applications here. And uh, you can make a shoe insole here. Use polymer materials. You'll be able to convert mechanical energy into electricity. You'll be able to use this one, put in the shoes. You're walking, you can generate electricity, and hook up with the GPS system, can do body health monitoring. The way you walk, the pressure, the temperature, all these kind of signals. And then use the GPS, can send a signal to some distance, and you can communicate that. So that's why a human, he don't have to jump that hard, you know what I mean? Just normally walk is enough. And this shows that a human is a local network. If we can power ourselves, we can have the signal over there, right? So this is completely different from the traditional way. No magnets, no coils are required for mechanical energy conversion. That's the thing we never get rid of for hard, over 100 years. But here is, diff is a different way, okay? How good we can do today? This is two, two feet, two by two feet, a board. It's very thin, it's about half a centimeter, just like a board. And then you can see, just walking on the surfaces, this 500 LED light flash like crazy, see that? In Hong Kong, you have a lot of people walking. So how do you power Hong Kong? Keep walking. Why we do exercises? We waste the energy. Put your energy into this. Uh, not only just for power generation, a lot of mobile electronics, a lot of things we care about can be powered by this. In the way you, you have no way to charge your cell phone, there is a way to do this, also for health monitoring as well. So this is, we'll be able to do this one. No, no string attached to the foot here, so just freely walking. So we can st install this one in a subway station, you know, the people just walking very fast there, right? Flexible electronics, we use the fabric, fiber-based, Tropical generator here. Fiber-based battery. We can make a system under the arm, so you walk back and forth like that. And this is a soft battery. And this is a heart-beating monitoring commercial product. We use the power generator to directly drive this. This sends a signal to the cell phone. So immediately, you know, oops, this is a video. <clears throat> you can see, he, he runs and his heart beating up and down, all recorded, and this can send to the doctor whenever is needed for that. So therefore, I think this shows that self-sufficient, self-dried system for medical purposes, for environmental monitoring. Sounds wave, when I talk, sounds very loud, but the energy point of it is small, because sound pressure is small. We use a paper-based, two pieces of paper, on the triggering of sound wave, they have resonance like that. This can convert tiny sound wave energy into electricity. We have received about a, a, a 0.1 watt per square meter, not very large, but still can charge your phone. Let's see. Let's see this one. And, and put it back on the cell phone, our student talking, and they can charge this little capacity. We can measure for that. But of course, you have a question, say, how long does it take to get my battery fully charged? And my answer is just keep talking. <laughs> right? You get charged one day, right? So this is the paper-based, because the material is not limited. Paper is very cheap, you know, very cheap thing. Fiber, you know, everything we wear is fiber. We can have two fibers entangled together. And entangled together, any motion, the fiber will, will, will slide and squeezing. The squeezing and the sliding can produce a voltage and can drive a temperature measurement sensor. So you can see, we can sew this one in the fabric, sew this in the fabric that we be able to drive a temperature sensor. Here is the video, let me show you that. And we sew this in the lab coat, and the student flick the lab coat here, show the room temperature temperature measured by this sensor, it's 22 degrees C. And then he put on his arm and see what the temperature shows. He has no data, no energy storage unit needed. Generate it, use it as is. Okay, you can see that he wear this one, his temperature will start to rise because body temperature is higher than 22 degrees C. And now he just sneak it back 32 degrees, and finally again become what? 34 degrees. 
a self-sufficient, self-power system demonstrated for possibly for Internet of Things, right? The things are moving, so we have to be able to use this effect. Medical purposes. Use a small rat, but that little long. The breathing of the rat, be able to drive a pacemaker. You can see, is a pacemaker. Breathe three times, can drive the pacemaker once. Now we do the experiment, use, uh, use, a, use a, a large animal, 50 kilogram pig. The heart's real large. And uh, breathe once, drive the pacemaker 10 times. So large animal, this is a small animal test. So we, we should be able to have a power source, charge the battery for pacemaker, charge the power source for implantable medical device. You can think that can have impact for the quality of life of, of, of people who have, who have the need for these kind of things, right? So this is medical. We build a system. I keep emphasizing system. We start with materials, but materials is not only just look at materials. We use the materials to make a device. Device we can do the electronics. Electronics we can package to that. So this is energy available in our environment, whatever available. Use the generator, convert to electricity, a power management circuit, this is double E. And then we can charge a battery. And this have a universal uh, outlet here, like a USB. You can fit to any electronics you like to be. Here, show example. This is a watch, and this is a calculator. We can use to fully make this self-powered. And let me show you this one. And this is use a car opener as example. As you can see, 30 meters away, we park a car. And this is our generator. It's not very small yet, but pressing here, charge the super uh, the capacitor here. And then the super capacitor driven this car opener here. You can see the car light flashes. That means what? This press once, the car door opens. So this is a demonstrate example, self-driven electronic system. And I think this can be used for, uh, for, for Internet of Things because now we can reach 30 meters. In the future, I think three, three kilometers is very feasible with this, right? So this one <coughs> is a system demonstration. Environmental protection. We have a lot of issues in environmental protection. For example, corrosion. Anything metal have surface corrosion. Use the kinetic energy in the water, convert to voltage or current. They can do a reduction reaction to reduce the corrosion rate of metal surfaces. So this is for this kind of environmental protection here. Pollutions. The water is being polluted by organic species. Use the kinetic energy of water flow, convert to electricity. We can degrade those kind of organic pollutions to make a water treatment. This demonstration should be also possible as well. Wind energy. You see very many wind mills around there, generally. Let me show you a different one. This is used, let me show you this video first. You can see this one. This is a high-speed camera show. We have two pieces of polymer here. So on the wind, it's doing like this dancing, right? Now, if we make it this, you can see on the wind drive, they start to contact. Look at the light. New way halves the energy in, right? And you can put it on a, on a roof, uh, roof like this. And so far, we can get about uh, more than 2 watt per square meter surface areas. So for remote areas, you can do self-sustainable. Microgrid, we talk about microgrid today in, in the Chinese University of Hong Kong, about microgrid. This can be microgrid too, right? So besides the solar cell, we can do this as well. So this is a new way to convert wind energy to electricity. Pollution, if you go to Beijing, you know that. <laughs> right? Let me show you pollution cleaning. This is a domestic made car. Let's measure the exhaustion of this car. How much PM 2.5 in here? Okay, so let's do this. <laughs> uh, all right. So okay, here it is. This is, the, this is the exhaustion pipe. So we measure the PM 2.5 first. Okay, and see how much we read. Then we use the, 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 the kinetic energy of this exhaustion gas. Use our nano generator to generate high voltage, 3,000 volts. Okay, let's see the number first. It measured. Over a thousand. Can you imagine that? Over a thousand. Just this is exhaustion. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a voltage generated by our generator here, when the particle PM two point five flow through here, you have electrostatic charge. 
we have electrostat absorption, absorb the part. Let's see that. Okay, we need to reconnect the pipe. So this one goes through our generator here. This is the first generation. We now have a third generation already. Okay, this go here, and this go through here, and remeasure it. Remeasure that. So we'll be able to get the PM 2.5 dramatically reduced for that. Original is about over 1,000, and now you see 21. Okay, this is so powered. Because our generator have a characteristic high voltage. So this through the, 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 the exhaustion connect energy, we get 3,000 volts. The little particle flow here can be electrostatic absorption here and clean the air. So we divide this into a commercial product right now. Hopefully it can help to clean our environment a little bit for that. Okay, so this is the environmental. In Hong Kong, you have a lot of rain. You also develop solar cell. When it's rain, the solar cell is not that effective. Can we make a device harvest the raindrop energy and a solar cell simultaneously? Any solar cell have a surface protection layer. We replace the layer by our tropical generator. So these things can convert solar energy and raindrop energy simultaneously into electricity. We have done that demonstration as well and show the possibility you can do that. So use whatever energy is available whenever it's available. I think it's a new way to look at this kind of hybrid cells. Okay, hybrid cells. So this is the, uh, for the areas that have the more rain here, okay? Now, I always talk about small, little tiny little things for that. Is there a solution possible for large scale energy need? I want to propose this idea to you. There's a way we can do large scale energy need. Let's see how to do it. Nature published this paper, say, future energy can be used ocean wave. 75% of Earth's surface being covered by water, but the energy from those water almost unused. So nature of our three things, free of charge, solar, light, air, and also gravity. And this is gravity, a lot of gravity change here, okay? How do, we, how do they do that right now? Let's say, okay, let's build this. This is magnets, coils based, but it's very heavy. Put in the water, it sinks to the bottom. So they have to build something supported. Build something supported. And then say, okay, the, 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 the stream will drive this flow electricity. You can think, how much does this cost? How much electricity this can generate? Does that make it financially viable or not? Probably not. This is shallow water, you can do that, but deep water, this becomes impossible. Okay, and they say, well, we rely on coils and, and, and magnets. That means traditional way cannot do that. Can you do that? Well, let's see. We focus on a human motion. Okay, in, in, in the Chinese, it's called yi ren Human based, right? Human based. We have a lot, in Asia, in Hong Kong, we have a lot of people. We never have a shortage of that. We focus on small motion here. How about a large scale? Is that a dream or is, a is there any feasibility? Okay, let's look at that feasibility. Let me show you that. A couple years ago, we showed that. If we build our generator here, around here, the water wave swallow the surface. If you have nice designed electrode below here, liquid solid contact also produce trouble electricity. In the chemistry, it's called double charge layer, okay? And this surface could be charged. When the water comes over here, it can destroy the symmetry of a charge across the two electrodes here. In such a case, the electron has to flow. And when it completely cover half, uh, some more electron to flow, when it becomes completely swallowed here, it no more current flow. And when the water descending, it becomes charged again. So this uses the natural charge in water droplets. Let me show this experimentally. This is a little basket here, and this is the generator here. It's made a, a slab, fixed slab. And now you can see this, we use the, we just fill in the surface of the water here, swallow it, uh, look at the light, it's gonna flash. So you just flip the water like that. In the morning, if you have a shower head, 
And this is the thing here. You, 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 you show on this and the electricity generator over here. Okay? So this is, uh, this is the uh, small scales. How do we do larger scales? Okay? How larger scales? The motion of the ocean is a lot of wave like that. Irregular, low frequency. And so this low frequency, if you use electromagnetic, the efficiency is very low because the, the flux change, the magnetic flux change is very slow. Okay? So how are we going to do that? So we use slide, make ours into a small cage structure, put in water. Any fluctuation water can do this. Let me show the, the design. Make a bowl shape. This is the size, a small and a baseball. Inside the bowl is another smaller bowl. And we have our electrode design. So if you put this in the water, the, the thing is going to flink back and forth. So that little core will rotate back and forth. OK, here it is. Look at that. That's what you need, OK? Look at this a dozen light flashes. This produces at least 30 volts. 30 volts. One sphere is not enough. Can you make a, a net? You know, one sphere, another sphere, 10 centimeter apart, like that, like that, like that. You can make a fish net. Because this is half empty. You can see this is half empty. And the water is float on the surfaces here. And this can be a fish net here. From our extrapolation calculation, one kilometer surface area could produce megawatt. Megawatt. Furthermore, if you can expand this one to 100 kilometer by 100 kilometer, you can produce the power output of a three gauge dam, Can you think about the number? What's the advantage? No day night difference. The poorer the wetter, the better. No immigration needed. No earthquake. Right? Also, I anticipate low cost because we use polymer-based materials can fully encash here. So therefore, you can see there's a potential for this. So this is a dream. This is a dream. Maybe in, five, in seven to 10 years, we can do that. Maybe earlier. Depends the, the support from the government in this regard. But I have a... <laughs> so I have a dream, so-called blue energy. The energy go beyond the green energy. We have so many green energy. We are tired of green energy, right? This is blue energy. Blue water. <laughs> Blue energy is go beyond the green energy, right? Maybe one day is possible for that. So at least we should have dream. Lastly, I present this uh, generate converted tiny mechanical energy into electricity. This is a sensor. This is a sensor. You can produce self-powered sensors. Let me show you a couple examples here. And the a sensor itself, it does not have electric power. We made this board, and you can tapping at different parts of the board. Look at the current light flashes. You can tap different parts here, or like here. And this is for monitoring anybody motion on the top. And this is the way to do it. You can see that? So if you put underneath the company here, I walk back forth, you know exactly where I stand, when do I stand over there. Self power, because this motion, step on, give you electric signal. You don't need a video camera. You don't need a video camera spot like that. So this will give you registered tracker, have a lot of application for traffic monitoring, parking lot monitoring, and many other things as well. Security as well, okay? So, solve power sensors. Keyboard. Everybody use keyboard. You use it, I use it. Have you imagined using keyboard generating electricity? We tried it first, but eventually we say there's not much current can generate, but provide a new intelligent keyboard. The keyboard you cannot get in if you, your typing behavior different from the system stored, okay? So this is the keyboard we made. You, you know, each of us type differently, particularly the, the phrase you are familiar with. You just mm, type in. But you used to ask the other different guy type the same thing, different way, okay? So we in, in, invite three different students to type the same phrase word. The reason because the finger, you tap this keyword, keyboard, give you a speed to strike the keyboard. That's the current signal. The current spikes, that slow spike represents the force of pressure you strike the key. Okay, so let's look at that. Three guys <laughs> type the same phrase. Look at the signal generated. Completely different. Completely different. 
Okay, now even they know the password, the way they type is different, cannot get in the system. Let's look at our intention keyboard here. He was trying to get in. <laughs> Sorry, the way you type it didn't fit. Okay. The second person come in to type. No, it didn't. Okay. Of course not. All right. Mm. So this gives you a double security of your keyboard. Even somebody know the password cannot get in the system. I think the guy looks different from this guy. Can't he can't get in there. <laughs> and until, until the right guy show up, of course he can get in. Otherwise, we're not show it to you, right? <laughs> this show the possibility for what? Double security, and then you can have for internet security for many things. You can do that, and people do ask me for that. If I got a little mad, I can't get my system. I say, okay, this double security is not designed for you to get mad, okay? If you get mad, don't get this system. Just use the single key keyboard idea, <laughs> right? This is designed for something. You come down, you come down, then you can do that. And some people say, well, I have a little drink. I can't, and my way type is different from that. Okay, go until you clear your mind, then you can come to the system for that. <laughs> so we have a first generation, second generation, like a voice recognition. You know the early days? Only when you speak standard. The voice recognition can continue. Today, probably, you speak Cantonese, they can completely understand that, too. I think it's just a toleration. Developing. We just discovered that a couple years ago, still have a long way to go. But I think there's a potential for security system to be developed for that, right? Information security for that. So you can see, this nano generator can be two things. Medical purpose as well. Many things to tiny imitation. Let me summarize. From Beginning, we found this one. Within a year, we improved to about 500 watt per square meter surface area. The, the energy conversion efficiency can reach 50%. 50%. Remember, this use of materials, no polymer, uh, no coils, no magnets. We, have, we even have a roadmap to accomplish next few years for smaller scale energy sensors. Uh, uh, commercial sensors, new sensors, and even to larger scale, and they need it. So we need, uh, we need some support to do that, but also take a lot of time to do that as well. Lastly, <clears throat> I'll go very quickly. We, we, we do do a lot of this one. Many people do solar cell research, thermoelectric research. They have the figure of merits to calibrate that. What is our figure of merits? <coughs> we established this one. We use borrow the idea of a Carnot uh, cycle here. We discuss the charging, discharging curve of the traveler generator with the press of a switch to maximize the loop. This loop, this is the maximum energy we can output. Theoretically, right, how do we do that? And we have the equation for that. Of course, the equation, I will not explain to that, but I have two figure of merits. Material's figure of merits is the surface charge density. You measure the surface charge density, they give you figure of merits of the materials. The second one, structure of merits. You know, all these different shapes, which is better? We have a structural figure of merits. We can do a numerical calculation and predict all the figure of merits for different configurations. You care about that. If you have a design configuration, look at this chart, choose the materials. We also standardize the materials measurement of surface charge density. And here is a few examples. We normally use this one. Look at this materials. It's not expensive materials. It's just conventional materials. Yeah. We measure this, the surface charge density and use this one. You can have a guidance for choice of materials, right? So this is the figure of merits for the system. Why do I think this is important technology? Number one, we target a low frequency. Things like this, body motion, random, irregular motion. Things just, you can walk faster, you will walk slower, okay? High efficiency, you must do this at high efficiency. Diverse range of applications, no coil, no magnets. Can use almost any materials we have. This is, can cut the cost, if you have materials, right? Can be transparent, twistable, stretchable, flexible, whatever you try to do. We made all this kind of Recently we made a generator that can stretch 300% time. Okay, so anything uh, uh, conformable to any shape, light, low density, and small volume, 
potentially low cost and easy to scale up. So with those one, I believe there's a way we could scale this up and make application in some area we, we are interested about, okay? Let me give you a little reflection. When we first started this nano generator, people know I work on that. We threw some very difficult time here. People don't believe what we made. They think you, you see some artifacts, you see something, uh, signals too small to be useful, all this are good stuff, okay? But any technology advances must experience three stages. At the first stage, people say, some people say, this conflict with the Bible. <laughs> Let me see what you've done, it's complete shit. It's so the first stage. They don't believe it. Just this comfort bar cannot be right. The second, you have to go the second stage and say, okay, uh, what you do is nothing new, already be done. <laughs> the third stage, they say, okay, when you show your success, so yeah, I believe since the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> this is not what I said. This is a famous quotation in the Museum of Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize Museum in uh, Stockholm. They have a few banners. One of the banners is this. And let me show you a couple of things. The first time we gave a nano general idea, the word was September 2005. When we finished the paper, it was December 25th, 2005. This was a picture proof of that. I told my student that day, I said, you will never forget this day. And I never thought this can inspire me for 10 years. Can inspire me for another 10 years. Never thought about it, but here we are. Here's the date, you see that? No, freedom. <laughs> Remember, December 25th was the Christmas day. Right? I was still work with me during the Christmas day at that time. So show you the, <laughs> the past we went through. Okay, today I show you a couple of things. Number one, scientifically, piezotronics. And the electronics can be potentially useful for use mechanical tricking to control electronics. Can use polar charge to control photonic processes. This can be interesting from basic science, can also be interesting from application point of view. Lastly, I introduced nano generator. Briefly show piezoelectric nano generator. Many talk about trouble electric nano generator for self power systems, small things. Possibly potential for blue energy and the self power sensors. So all these things I think will keep us busy for the next 10 years or so. For that, okay, lastly, I think I have a CNV. Anyway, with that, I'm honored, pleased to be at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. This is a university, only 25 years, but it's one of the best universities around the world. It has such a high reputation. Everybody talk about uh, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. I congratulate you, thank you for your hard work, and also wish you in the next 25 years be the number one world. Thank you.